Um, hello, everyone. Um, I know today is the, the last day of the uh, Field Dev Summit. Uh, we don't want it to end, but um, but let's make, make today count as well. So today I want to briefly talk about like Starboard, the tools that we provide, um, the dashboards and websites that we have that could potentially help you um, to provide additional trust and transparency uh, of your smart contract to your users. Uh, and also help you drive adoption and stand out from the, the, the competition in this ecosystem. Yeah, so uh, briefly about Starboard, we are a company uh, that's focusing on um, like um, um, Web3 um, data analytics and also product incubation. So we do two things. First, we uh, do a lot of um, uh, analytics um, about uh, the Falcon network. Uh, we provide uh, data and also like uh, key health metrics to help people understand what's going on in this um, network. And also we, we build a product to uh, help pe people better participate in this uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, we have been here since um, like right after the, uh, the launch of the mainnet, uh, and then we have uh, been putting, you know, just keep doubling down, uh, putting uh, uh, dedicated resources to uh, help build this uh, ecosystem. Yeah, so today I want to cover three agenda. I'm also um, joined um, by my uh, colleague Ben Howe here. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is like why is uh, why does uh, trust and transparency matter? Uh, among FVM use cases, what are some of the data that people want to see? Uh, the second, I want to talk about um, FVM health metrics, right? So we we have uh, we have this um, uh, Filecoin network health dashboard that most of you probably have used before, uh, but we have also you know uh, delved into uh, like the analytics of. Um, the uh, the FVM specifically, and then I want to discuss what makes um, um, like um, uh, smart country ecosystem robust. And the last but not least, we want to talk about um, like a, a leaderboard of uh, smart contracts that we have built, uh, and that could potentially help you stand out from your peers. Yeah, so um, Falcon has really uh, led the exponential growth in Web3 uh, adoption. I think we have heard many uh, talks and many um, discussions about this. Um, and I think it's just like um, something that um, you, you don't really see in like other uh, ecosystem. Um, as, uh, it has all this um, great storage capacity, all this data store and uh, thousands of um, storage providers and millions of network users. And with the arrival of FEM, it actually brings additional use cases to this uh, Web3 data economy. Where we have seen, uh, you know, like uh, DeFi uh, projects coming to FEM. Uh, there are meme tokens. There are um, uh, gamified that uh, take advantage. Um, uh, like uh, there are gaming gaming apps that takes advantage of the uh, storage capacity of Filecoin. Uh, and then all different types of use cases, also like data DAOs, right? So this is like something that's uh, um, not possible to be uh, implemented uh, on like other. Um, uh, uh, other blockchains without the storage capacities. Yeah, I just want to also show that this is like a preview of the uh, DeFi leaderboard that we're going to talk about right now, right? We can see that uh, the growth uh, in the, the DeFi landscape is uh, uh, really amazing. Uh, I think you can you can clearly see the the, the acceleration in, in growth, and then we, we are pretty sure that uh, it will uh, take up very soon. Yeah, so um, what are some of the data dimensions um, available on Filecoin, right? So like uh, if you're talking about a, a, a blockchain uh, like Bitcoin, uh, it's usually a, a digital currency um, network. And then um, most of the use cases on that particular network is to uh, send and receive token. Um, and then you have smart contract that's being enabled by a smart contract um, uh, blockchains like uh, Ethereum, uh, and now you have like use case data, uh, which means that people actually use this for something, for like execute a p piece of code, um, instead of just you know sending uh, and receiving tokens. And now you have uh, Filecoin, right? Filecoin has not just the um, use case level data, but it also has the service level data, uh, meaning the storage component of this network. Uh, and then with the arrival of uh, FVM, uh, there are actually additional. Uh, so it's like it acts, um, it, it adds a bit to the the to the to the use case data uh, that I was just talking about. Uh, but also it has um, overlaps with like st storage itself. Uh, I think 
we have covered some of the topics uh, earlier today as well about programmable uh, storage market. Right, that's something that could um, happen uh, on Falcon as well. So basically, um, the key data that we want to take a look at uh, for FVM first is definitely transaction. Uh, transaction uh, that happens on FVM and the, the transaction metadata. Um, smart contract information. Um, what are what are the so source code of the smart contract? How do I trust them? Uh, smart contract TVR and token information. There will be like you know a token that's being uh, issued on top of Falcoin. Um, and then they will have uh, use cases themselves as well. Uh, FEM usage and statistics, this was uh, the FEM health metrics I was talking about just now, which includes like user statistics, financial data, usage breakdown, and also uh, the overlap with the storage market uh, or like the storage capacity of Alcoin. Uh, and the final, finally, you have like protocol level statistics. So this is more like a holistic um, a section where uh, you see a particular protocol which could have or like which could uh, uh, um, like a big, big uh, consist of uh, a bunch of smart contracts uh, and then how are they doing right so that's why um, uh, we want to build a um, product or like a tool to help people uh, track the FEM data to track all this uh, uh, data that becomes available with FEM uh, and even more, right? So um, we, we want to introduce you the the Starboard FEM Explorer. Uh, it's a, a first feature complete FEM contract explorer as designed for developers and smart contract use cases. So uh, just a couple of highlights for this uh, explorer. First is like um, it offers um, the most complete suite of uh, smart contract verification tools. We have like web UI, API, hard hat uh, uh, command lines. Uh, I will. Uh, do a quick demo um, shortly. Uh, and also, we present uh, very comprehensive FEM statistic and key metrics. So those are aggregated metrics that, that uh, aims to give you insights about how the um, FEM uh, is doing and how the uh, overall uh, smart contract network is doing. Uh, and then finally, we have this um, uh, leaderboard section where we showcase the leading smart contracts and dApps. Uh, right now, we only have the uh, DeFi section because that is uh, currently the focus of um, the FEM builders. Uh, but uh, later, uh, we will also be like, uh, start to cover uh, additional categories of uh, dApps so that it will provide you know more of like um, uh, uh, like a um, if you want like a like a specification a, a specified. Uh, metrics for each category, you can you can um, find that on our website as well. Yeah, so transaction data, metadata. I think this is uh, something that's very important. Like if you're a builder, you want to test out your um, um, contract. If you're a user, you want to just you know try it out, play around with some contracts. Um, you need a UI for it for this. Um, you also want to take a look at the the transaction um, uh, detail, like the metadata that it contains. For smart contract information, we also have like a contract list that gives you all the uh, smart contracts uh, that have been deployed on FEM. Right here, I'm showing you all the verified contracts. So you actually see the contract name. And then when you click into this, you can see their contract source code. So like contract verification is a process where uh, we uh, try to you know uh, hash the uh, source code of a contract and then compare, compare that with the runtime bytecode. Uh, that's recorded on the blockchain. So you know that when you are interacting with a specific smart contract, what exactly is the code logic of that uh, contract, right? So you're not playing uh, with something um, uh, blindly. Yeah, and also we provide you with an um, um, uh, interface where you can uh, connect connect your wallet and then just directly um, interact with the contract on the, on the uh, Explorer. Yeah, so uh, I just want to um, maybe uh, provide a little bit more uh, into the uh, contract verification because this is something uh, that we think is super important. Uh, and then we have also you know, committed lots of resources into developing all these different type of uh, contract verification methods to help people um, really deliver that trust and transparency to their users. So contract verification, as I just said, is the process of confirming that the source code of a smart contract matches the deployed runtime bytecode on the blockchain. Uh, and then it's very important because it uh, has like lots of uh, trust and transparency. And uh, I think uh, if we are, like for example, if you're really talking about um, like retail user who don't really know about 
uh, blockchain or don't really know about like smart contract, they might be fine, right? It's like, oh, you're just like getting um, getting them to to play around with it. Uh, but of course, they are not going to uh, commit uh, lots of uh, funds or like lots of uh, um, uh, money uh, into the, the smart contract. Uh, but also like if you're talking about uh, institutional player or like uh, another uh, builder, right? Another FVN dev that wants to uh, build on top of uh, existing uh, a smart contract or something, then they must know uh, what is the source code, what is the code logic that's behind the, uh, the the smart contract, and then how do I know that the source code that you provide, you open source on your GitHub uh, repo, is like exactly the same as the one that you have deployed on uh, the on the network. Yeah. So how do you verify your contract with us? Uh, is it possible if we can play the video? Yeah, so the first way is to verify uh, through the web UI, right? So uh, you can either just go to the contract verification section, enter your contract address, or you can go search for a contract first or click on a specific contract uh, detail page and click the verify uh, button, right? So it's also very simple, like we need the metadata uh, file. The metadata serves as an index of all the parameters and all the uh, contract that goes into a um, a particular contract that's being deployed on um, the uh, on the network, right? So it will serve as an index. So it's like you have index, and then it will list out all the .so files and all the um, uh, parameters that's required for this smart contract. And then uh, you just click um, submit, and then it will run. Uh, and it will also tell you that uh, if there's are specific a specific file that's missing. Right, and then if there are uh, uh, parameters uh, that are wrong, so uh, I think uh, that's something that's um, um, uh, that that that's like a really uh, friendly UI, and also you can do it with like API, right? So um, this is a, just a, a quick demo um, um, of like how you can verify your um, uh, contract through uh, API. I think it's also something that uh, is very similar, right? So and then and then when you see that a uh, success message returned, and then it means that the uh, the contract is uh, verified. And the third way of doing this is through the uh, hot hat command line. I think we're still the only one um, uh, in in the ecosystem that offers uh, this way to um, to verify your, your contract. So just go to this page. I've also pasted all the links uh, in the uh, in in the um, in the slides. Uh, so um, yeah, and and then also we have all the links on on the FEM uh, on our FEM dash uh, explorer as well. Yeah. So we, we've also built a demo uh, for you to, um, j I mean, just to go through um, the, the entire process. So you can just like open, um, open your uh, IDE and then use the uh, comment lines to um, verify the contract. So in that, in that way, you, uh, you, we, we also have like a deploy and verify. So it's like if you can deploy and verify. Uh, um, in like one step, uh, which I think it's uh, it's also like very good because like sometimes when people deploy first and then they go back and try to verify it, uh, they might not uh, they might not remember some of the parameters that have input. So uh, it would be great if you can just like do like you know deploy and uh, verify. Yeah. So that's just a quick go through. Uh, can we go back to the slides? Yeah, so that's just a quick go th uh, uh, walk through of uh, some of the, uh, uh, the the contract verification feature. And next, um, I'm gonna um, ask uh, Ben how to give us a uh, quick overview of um, um, key FBM metrics to track, and then also the uh, the leaderboard that we have built. So thanks, Sylvan. So I think. Um, Sylvan has already covered, you know, most of the the metrics. Uh, why we want to to track these metrics on on the FEM, uh, and the main categories for these uh, metrics are things like, you know, the users, uh, financial data, usage breakdown, uh, storage metrics. And at the moment, we are kind of tracking like, um, you know, uh, users who are the main contract users. Uh, who are the contracts? What are the transactions? Uh, also, things related to uh, gas cost, gas usage. 
So if you go to our FEM Explorer, you'll see like, uh, you know, charts like these where we track the transactions, uh, users, uh, the unique contracts that are deployed, also the, the cost of gas. But these are relatively surface level analysis, right? And you can actually kind of dive deeper into, you know, if you see something like a search in, you see a search in certain uh, metrics, what is driving it? So for example, we ask three questions here, right? So who are the main contract creators? Because you might want to know, let's say recently we have seen uh, in the last two weeks, there was a huge uh, increase in, in uh, accounts that were onboarded on the network. So we want to know, okay, who, who created these accounts and you know, are there any uh, causality or causal factors that we can, we can identify from the chain data? So those, those charts that I showed you will be actually part of a, a new uh, FVM metrics uh, dashboards. We're going to uh, launch them in the near future and it might give you some insight into uh, you know, the more complex network dynamics uh, occurring on the FVM and give you some insight about uh, how users are behaving and also maybe how to better position your uh, FVM uh, apps. So another initiative that we have actually is, you know, we want to help, uh, you know, uh, DeFi protocol owners, uh, DAP uh, developers uh, to, with a platform to kind of stand out better, right? So the question is, if, you, if you're a user, uh, how do you know, you know, which, which DAPs or which protocols to trust? And as a protocol, you also want to be able to kind of stand out uh, to other users on the network. So right now we have this like a uh, contract ranking table. So it it basically tells you okay there there are so many contracts here. Uh, you know how many users there are. What uh, what's the traction? What's the balance? But uh, these contracts are kind of not uh, attached or labeled with 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 a name, right? So what we have recently launched is uh, a DeFi leaderboard where you know. We have a list of you know the contracts that each uh, DeFi protocol owns, and now we can kind of systematically uh, you know find out what deposits they have and kind of rank them relative to each other. So as you can see here, we have this uh, leaderboard, and you can see you know what what are the deposits that each uh, protocol are holding at the moment. And this can be very useful, not only for the protocols themselves, but also for SPs to, to look for financing. Uh, and over here, you know, we have this table and yeah, we, we actually track these uh, you know, things like deposits, uh, borrows, a number of active users, stakers and, and, and borrowers uh, rather actively. So if, if you go into you know, one of these like uh, DeFi protocols, you can actually have a very detailed breakdown, right? You can see like uh, what, what contracts uh, this protocol has, uh, you know, what deposits, what uh, borrows that they, they take out, what, what, what's the average, uh, average transaction, uh, the quantum of uh, each individual transaction. So I think we, we did receive a lot of questions about, you know, uh, when we are tracking all these uh, or comparing these DeFi protocols, uh, how do we actually uh, calculate this? So the, the basic model for, for uh, financing protocol can be thought of as uh, you know, like, like a staking pool. So imagine that you, know, that you have a pool of funds and you have stakers that you know, some of them will put token into the pool and they may remove the, the token at, at some point. And also uh, storage providers will also borrow and repay um, funds into the pool. So because they are repaying with interest, then the, the, the stakers also receive a portion of the, uh, of, 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 of the repayments. So in this case, what we do is that we just capture all the, the contracts held by the protocol and you know, basically tabulate uh, you know, the incomings and the outgoings. But we also found out that it can be rather complicated because you know what one of the the virtues of the FVM is that you know you you can kind of uh, 
arrange your finance, financing protocol in you know, any arbitrary way that, that might be meaningful to you. And there are, there are many, many uh, different business models around. So you might have a staking pool or you might have some kind of like a mortgage style uh, uh, financing concept. And these can be kind of difficult to, to uh, quantify properly. So what we do is that we allow, uh, we allow protocols to kind of declare their, their reported values to us as well. So right now we, we have uh, you know, developed this like DeFi leaderboard just for DeFi apps. But you know, we are happy to expand into other areas as well, uh, into other categories of, uh, of, of dApps that you might want to work with us on. So with that, uh, yeah, just put up the links here for all our products, uh, our dashboard, FBM Explorer, and also yeah, you may like to use our Space Scope API as well. So any questions? Uh, what do you mean by like FEM DAP metrics? Yeah, so that's the the, the, the final yeah. part. Yeah, is the the, the leaderboard. Yeah. So so we we will like expand. So right now we have one leaderboard for DeFi, but in the future we will expand that into different major categories. So it's like it will be a is similar to like what you will find on like Dev Radar, but like like Dev Radar or like DeFi Llama, they they mostly focusing on uh, things on, like just um, uh, execution chains. Uh, but for Filecoin, obviously you have this storage and data service capacity, so that there will be additional uh, major, for example, like programmable storage, right? Um, how many, uh, how much uh, storage is being onboarded through? like a programmable way, right? That could be something that's very unique to Filecoin. And then that, those will be uh, some of the new sections that will be, um, you know, covering in the future. Uh, I want to, like, discuss that later in the, in the depth discussion that we have. Because I think we can also hear from, like, some of the people here. Most people here have projects on the FM. Yeah. Like, what they want to see on the depth. Th that would be great. That, yeah, that would be great. Awesome. Uh, that's that's a good point, and I also want to point it out. Maybe we can explore the idea of that having the data into the explore, right? Like Filecoin have all the chain data for, as well as the the data, the metadata, uh, the, the metadata, any data. So if if and the blower, explorer, if we can track the the deals going through the smart contract going to programmable storage, can we? Is it possible have a like static around those and as well as the data exists on Filecoin? If the explorer yeah. can help on those, be. Yeah, I Amazing. think I think uh, there are just like a couple of things um, that um, that could like, complicate things a bit. But of of course, if something is not challenging, it's not worth doing, right? <laughs> uh, I think Juan will, will will agree to to that part. Uh, but yeah, uh, but the the main thing is like for example, if you are um, um, onboarding your data through like a like an NFT style, right? So you will have uh, okay, like here is my uh, CID, but then I mean that CID into an um, like an NFT. So I'll have like a like an NFT token code, and then with that token code, it becomes an index, and you can go into the metadata. Potentially, metadata can contain a um, description of what that piece of data is. Like for example, if it's like like NASA data, like satellite images. Then you can have this um, uh, a description uh, in that metadata, and then that entire thing becomes minted as an NFT. So that could be one way to do it. Uh, another way of doing it is is just to keep like a, for example, like a decentralized index uh, of all the data. So that would be uh, closely tied to the 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 deal aggregator. Like for example, if we have like this uh, decentralized deal aggregator, um, it could also maintain a decentralized like uh, like an index uh, of all the deal that has been onboarded. What is it? Uh, who submit this? Um, who's storing this? And then what is the uh, the description of that uh, of that piece of data? And then with that, uh, we're thinking like you could also just get expand into like for example like data NFTs, like data DAOs, uh, a perpetual storage because all of that and also even like a, a decentralized. Wikipedia or like a decentralized um, uh, archive because all of that requires, you know, like an index, um, a, a token, a, a hash um, that maps into the metadata of the de description of the data that maps to a specific 
actual data that's being stored on Filecoin. So I think that is uh, something that we're envisioning having. And then of course, like if, if that's the structure, then it's very easy to put that into like a, like a leaderboard because <laughs> you know, it can just like track that, yeah. And if you, if you do the data NFT, because uh, earlier we were talking about like how you could have like data wallets that would really simplify all of this. Yeah. So if you have all that goodness put into NFT, you could also link back yeah. to that which will make it super seamless. And, yeah. and also, I, I just think that lots of the existing NFT stacks can be directly borrowed into the development of like um, like data NFT. Because essentially, um, like I, I was talk, talking to, to, to like some friends previously about, oh, like what what would be a, like why would, why would anyone mean any like NFT on Filecoin? Right? I was like, okay, so like for the, uh, today's NFTs, like mostly there are like profile pics, right? So how big can a profile pic get, right? Like one megabyte, that's like <laughs> very high resolution <laughs> profile pic that they can get. But f with Filecoin, you can make like petabytes uh, level of uh, data into one NFT. So that's when you can create like data asset, which is like one single NFT represent a very valuable and useful data set as the metadata of that particular uh, NFT. And then, like, can you do that on Ethereum? No, you can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, any other questions for Silver? Yeah. Uh, do you plan to add uh, into some integration of smart contract events into Space Scope? Um, some indexing. We, we are thinking about that. We are thinking okay. about that. Well, so I think, I, I guess the first step will be integrating all the FEM uh, aggregated metrics. So like, for example, if you are um, interested in, in uh, knowing like um, how, mu how much um, contract has been onboarded to FEM, what is the daily active user of FEM, uh, I think we already have that data. We're just like, you know, doing some final checks and then we'll integrate that in, uh, to Space Scope. But I think what you are talking about is more on like a con specific contract level, right? So like within that particular, yeah. Uh, yes, so so you have like smart contract and, and the, the information associated with that smart contract. Um, that's, we we, ha all, we already have something for all the SPs, right? So, I mean, SP actor is in some way also a smart contract. Yeah, so we, we will, we will um, try to rec replicate that for the uh, FEM contracts as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Hey. Oh, I want to ask you, uh, 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 information of a specific storage provider. And yes, we have that with uh, the Space Scope Data API. Uh, 